So this morning, we're going to look one more time at some of the words that Jesus said. You know that we follow Jesus as our way shower in unity. So it's important for us to know what Jesus taught. We've been thinking for the past two weeks about how Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Seek first the kingdom of God. Ask, and it's given. Well, I saved the best for last. Maybe best because it's the toughest. And it makes us really wonder how to live it. These are the sayings that critical biblical scholars have asserted that these must be truly Jesus' words. This one is, give to everybody who begs of you. Now that one has stumped a lot of people over the time. Give to everybody who begs of you. We like to make meaning of things, we people, with our rational brains. And people have been trying to make meaning of these sayings since the moment they were said 2,000 years ago. We're meaning-making machines. And so I've, I've played with this phrase all week. And it's amazing how things come up for me when I'm preparing a talk. So if you ever want things to come up for you, just keep asking a question. And I asked people in this community, you know, Jesus said, give to everybody who begs of you. What do you think that means? And I got all kinds of answers. And it really added, all these little bits and pieces added to my cloud of thoughts for this week. In fact, at the same time, I, um, my sister, my younger sister, had an experience in July, June and July, of losing her beloved dog. She's so close to this dog that she calls her her Velcro dog. And it ran away because of fireworks. It took off. And Ellen spent 11 days trying to reunite with her Velcro dog. Now, I had not even realized that when she asked me, you know, my book's almost finished, could you edit it for me? Well, you know, I'm a former school teacher and she liked that I was only fifth grade teacher, I wasn't somebody who masters in English, because she wanted to write it conversationally and she didn't want one of her high school English colleagues to slay it with proper grammar. And I understand my sister very well, so I, she sent it to me. And I have been voraciously reading her book. I knew the ending, and still I couldn't wait to find the end. The ending is that she did reunite with her dog, 11 days and 11 nights away from her dog. But I didn't realize, and when the book gets published, I'm going to be selling it to you guys. It is so good. It's so exciting. But what I saw in the story is how people gave to Ellen as she asked for help. And it had nothing to do with money. So when we think about, Jesus said, give to everyone who begs of you, it's not just about money. So <coughs> drop those barriers and think give. I also did some research with some... Um, Professors who wrote books that I read while I was at school. One is James M. Robinson, who wrote The Gospel of Jesus. And the other is Burton Mack, who wrote, who wrote the New Testament. Um, and they wrote um, others as well. I also focused on some commentary that comes out of this amazing volume, which is the five Gospels. You know of four of them. The fifth one is the Gospel of Thomas. There's all kinds of commentary in here that inspired me. And some of the quotes that I'll say come out of some of these today. But just quickly, James Robinson and Burton Mack had some great ideas that um, added to my thoughts this week. And I realized that, you know, if we say give to everyone who begs, if we take that literally, we might get into some trouble. 
And I don't know if Jesus meant it literally. Because, you know, Jesus also said, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, offer the other one. I don't know if he meant that literally. And most of us certainly don't read it literally. Even pacifists wouldn't say, because somebody slapped me, I'm going to let them slap my other cheek. You're going to back away and protect yourself. So we don't have to get trapped into a literal interpretation of give to everyone who begs of you either. And if we did get literal about it, we could get legalistic and dogmatic about it. Well, give to everyone who begs of you means we, can't, we shouldn't own anything. We should make vows of poverty. We should... Anytime I get something, it doesn't really belong to me. I don't have to take care of it. I don't have to keep it. So, and we could get really judgmental with others who do have affluence because they're not giving it away. It's helpful to look at how Jesus was in his society. His first mentor was John, the one who did the baptizing, who said, Turn away from everything. Go out into the desert. Fast and pray. The end is near. And so Jesus followed the, John, the baptizer, and went out into the wilderness and fasted and prayed. And then he said, no, this is not for me. I need to go back into society. He went back to Galilee, which was Hellenistic, very Greek-oriented, very metropolitan, actually. And he had a one main message. He said, simplify, 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 but celebrate, celebrate life. Celebrate who you are and who we are together. He, as Burton Mack said, he promoted an outrageous lifestyle. He didn't fast, he feasted, he went to parties, he had a good time, he celebrated the richness of life. Burton Mack says he was a Galilean deviant. He routinely breached the walls and barriers that set the sacred space from, off from the profane blended the thing, the uh, opposites together, and he trampled indifferently on social norms. He spoke out against riches and against wealth and influence and power and authority. He spoke against hypocrisy, against injustices, and even family loyalties. But what he did speak toward is love and listening and tolerance. And he described an egalitarian, non-material, communal way of living. Give to everyone who begs. Give. James Robinson suggested that Jesus' gospel is brutal and upsetting and challenging but it's also very comforting. Jesus' message was not a new law to which humans had to conform. Not a new law. But it was just plain good news telling what God was doing for and through humans. So it's not a new code of law that Jesus is telling when Jesus says give to everyone who begs. It's an attitude. We can live this. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate our lives together. So I invite you to take those words, give to everyone who begs, out of your head, the rational rule-making head, and drop them into your heart knowing. And live them this week. Think that question. Ask friends. What do you think Jesus meant when he said, give to everyone who begs? My sister who wrote her story of finding her dog understood how people in community give so many opportunities to see and witness her receiving when she asked, please help me find my dog. 
That's a heart knowing. Even though she set out the $100 reward and the man who helped her find it, she offered it to her, sent it to him in the mail. He sent it back, he said in a letter, I do not receive money from people who I chose to give to. It's not about money. It's about thinking, giving. And we're being asked not to follow a list of codes, but to set standards for relationship in community. And to think, give, not give to, but give from a spirit of love and generosity. Jesus was able to do that because he knew the abundance of the universe was his and yours and mine. So he didn't have to keep tabs and hold on. He knew that giving would demonstrate the abundance of God. If there is any lack of any kind, it comes from a block of some kind. And the biggest way, the best way to reduce a feeling of lack is to give. Just the opposite of what you think you need. If you think you have lack, turn it around and give. Get yourself into that flow of giving and receiving. And when you do, you're learning that law of giving and receiving and being in the flow of the realm of spirit. So I invite you this week to ask that question. Rilke tells us, the poet Rilke tells us, be comfortable with the questions. It's important to remember to be patient with yourself, to love yourself and your thoughts. You don't need to know all the answers right now. It's just important to be in the question and live the question. What does it mean to give to everyone who begs of you? So if you'll take that little short affirmation I handed out to you this morning and say it with me, Together, I will think, give today. Think, give every day of your life and be in the flow of that. You will give, but you will receive a hundred times more as you give. Namaste. Namaste.